Ladies and gentlemen, how oh, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, it's a nice day sitting and chilling in the shade. Got some sun rays shining up on the beaches. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's not real. That's that's a, 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 a recurring video. Just just keeps looping and looping and looping and looping because it's a loop to loop video. So if y'all thought this was real and they thought that's where I was, y'all need some help. All right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I want to thank all of you for joining us. We're going to talk about two things in this video, which is the actual same thing. We're going to talk about the citizen, because gotta be, gotta know, gotta understand what a citizen is, and who you are according to what the foundation is. I told you I am on this foundation trip. I'm sorry, I'm doing a. I got this program, it's called J Downloader. J, hey, y'all, what up, J? No, the letter J. J Downloader. Ladies and gentlemen, go and download J Downloader. It's a free program. Make it for Mac, Linux, and Windows PC. Allows you to download, download, download. Go check it out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am not a sponsor of J Downloader. But what I will tell you, if you like the program, donate to those people. Why? Because they provided a free software for you all to do something that y'all been trying to do, many of you, and it allows you to do it in bulk. That's right, like you're going to Costco's or something, one of the big box stores. Anyway, check it out, JW Downloader. What the? 300 link? Oh, Lord have mercy, that's going to be a whole lot of stuff. Anyway, uh, let's get to this video. I'm not going to... I want to go to websites and everything, but as you can see, oh no, you can't see. I'm in airplane mode, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. I'm in airplane mode. Why? Because these mother keep hacking my computer and thinking they're going to be interfering and doing things, and I'm tired of it. So while I do the video, we're going to be in airplane mode. And if I got to show y'all something in the future, I'll just have it already pre-pulled up, but I don't need to show y'all this. Wait a minute. Why don't I need to show it to you? Because you already know it. Ladies and gentlemen, now there is something that most of you didn't know. That the people who founded America, they were referred to as the Puritans. Basically, they were a group of individuals who thought that the Bible should be made available to everyone. And they thought that individuals should be able to freely talk about the Bible and the contents thereof without oppression. Well, what happens, the king made it illegal for you to own and possess a Bible. And they also made it illegal for you to talk about it publicly. So you couldn't go out knocking on doors and preaching. The Puritans said, no, we're going to keep knocking on doors because we're commanded to do so. They said, no, y'all ain't doing none of that. And so the Puritans said, hey, Columbus, get your, no, I get, I, I, stop talking to them. They're my merchants. You come over here and talk to us. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, I, nah, I don't want to hear it. You talk to them all the time. Come talk to us. And so they got Columbus to come and talk to them. And Columbus said, what do y'all want? He said, we want passage. Well, you want passage too, that new land that you guys have been talking about. New land. Look, I've only been there once, and the Spaniards are already down in the south, southern part of that new land. So, the only place y'all can go is north, and it's almost winter time over there. Yeah, they're on a different hemisphere than you guys. So, you know, it's gonna be winter time, and you know, how am I gonna get back? We're gonna have to more there for the winter. But y'all gonna pay? Y'all can't afford me. What? Y'all been saving? Your life savings? Okay, you're going to give me your life savings. I'll take it. And so they got on the ship and they sailed on that flower in May to... Sorry, it was called the Mayflower. <laughs> they didn't actually sell in May. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, they came over to this new land. Now, they knew that there were other people there. So it wasn't that they were going someplace. No, they weren't. They were just coming over to settle. Work out some agreement so they could have some land. And they did. And the Indians were graceful. But when they got to Plymouth, y'all remember Plymouth? Yeah, they don't even make them mothers anymore. They sold. When they got to Plymouth, the Rock, Gibraltar, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, they decided to thank you, Jesus. I mean, thank Jehovah. That's right. They didn't thank Jesus. Because these individuals didn't believe that Jesus was God, but they did believe in God, and they did believe in the God of the Bible. And so if you find it, 
you can find it because a copy of the prayer is online. Why? Because the individual who prayed it decided to write it down. Why? I don't know. They had just gotten there. It would have been the first prayer they offered up. Memorial purposes. But either way, you can find it online. The player at the player, the prayer at Plymouth Rock. And you'll see that the individual utilized the name Jehovah. Did you believe? Would you believe? Could you believe that Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, and who else was that? Oh, that 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 guy who kept writing to his wife. Yeah, Davis person. Yeah, you know. You know uh, no, no, Adams was it? Yeah, it was Adams. 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 He had apples and everything. No, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't that that Washington person that had apples and an axe. No, it was the Adams person. He had apples. Yeah, Adams apples. You, you remember that that story? Yeah, that he had Adams apples, and so that. Oh, really? Wasn't that big of a? Okay, my bad. Anyway. They all wrote about their beliefs. Now, some people say the United States wasn't established on Christianity. No, but it was established on the Bible and the Ten Commandments. Ladies and gentlemen, if you go and you look at the common law for which this country was established, and you go and you look at the writings of George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, uh, Mr. Adams, you go and you look at all their writings, and you'll see that they were firm believers in that, that they talked about it all the time. That's why you see them talking about almighties and gods and all of that throughout all their papers. So when you are told that the common law was those decisions made by the court, that's a lie. You see, they were arguing as to what type of laws they were going to set up because they had some issues. They had some issues as to what type of laws they were going to set up because, you know, the people just wanted to live without there being much oversight over their daily affairs. So when you check that, then you find out two things. That those people never would have accepted a government that ruled over them. They had already gotten rid of a king. Go and look at George Washington's papers. He refused to be called King Washington said he didn't appreciate that. Now remember the title of president was already there because John Hanson, a black man, had already had the title of president. But George Washington said that that's the title that he would accept. Now mind you, we hear that the White House was built on the back of slaves. But John Hanson documents the very fact that not every person of color was considered a slave. Say what? That's right, John Hanson, a black man, elected as the first president of the corporation known as the United States, was elected, and he was a black man. They say, well, he was elected because nobody else wanted the job. That's not true. At least we believe that for a while, you know, because it sounds good. He was elected because at the time he was the best man for the job. Hello. Now, if you don't believe me, go do your research. And I'm going to tell it to you like it is. I, I'm not going to pull my punches. You see, I know history and I know people. And I know the way men think. There's no way in the world they would put him in that position if nobody else wanted the job. I ain't never researched it, ladies and gentlemen. I just know of John Hanson. Don't know anything he did other than the fact that he was a businessman. And that his skin color was not white. Okay. I can't tell you nothing else about him, but I guarantee if you go do the research, you're going to find out what I just said. Why? Not because I said it. No, because I said it doesn't make it law. Okay, you, you hear me? You holler me? You, you, you heard me? So just because I said it, don't make it law. But you know what does make it law? Reality. It's all about reality and not about reality. Ladies and gentlemen, reality makes it law. Reality says that ain't nobody going to give control over nothing to nobody unless they trust them. Like you people gave control over everything, including your lives and your fortunes. That's what they did. Remember Declaration of Independence? They pledged their lives and their fortunes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, don't be a citizen of the United States. Don't even be a citizen of a state. You want to be a part of the progeny. 
you want to be a part of the prosperity. You want to be a part of the fortunes. Why? Because you are what they were talking about when they said they pledged their lives and their fortunes. You see, if you look up a citizen as one, uh, some idiot who owes an allegiance to a country or something, you don't want to be owing nobody nothing, especially nobody's allegiance. Okay? You don't want to be pledging no allegiance to no country. Y'all don't understand, do y'all? The country was not designed to run like this. Say what? The country was not designed to run. What What do you just say? I said the country was not designed to run like this. When they first chose to put this country together and they chose to do the Declaration of Independence, do you know what they were doing? They weren't trying to set up a country Ladies and gentlemen, they weren't trying to take over all the land. They were only doing the colonies. Say what? That's right. They were only establishing those colonies. I got to answer this call, so I apologize. Give me one second. Since I met you, I've begun to feel so strange. Every time I... Oh, I'm sorry. I just answered a call from someone, and it's been a little bit of a minute. If you check the time, um, ladies and gentlemen, not the time on my recorder at the bottom of the screen. And if you didn't understand, those of you who watch these videos, I don't have to leave this up here. I can do that. But the reason why we have that on the screen is for your benefit, not for mine. Oh, no, don't tell me you do it for my benefit because you put that out there because you don't want to. Shut up. Just shut it up. Ladies and gentlemen, now, getting back to our conversation, when they founded, they didn't found a country, and everybody's misunderstanding that. They weren't founding a stupid country, the founders of this country. They didn't found a country. They were only colonizing. That's why they were called colonists. The country was too vast for them to found how are they going to find something? Oh, mama, look with this. I done found this sitting right here. What you What you mean? Yeah, that's a counter. Okay, yeah, it has a price tag. But no, I found it, mama. What you something in my hand for? What you taking that back, mama? Okay, they found it something. Everybody and their grandmama, even a five-year-old child knows that you don't just found something. That's the problem. You don't found something. They found something. And those of you who believe that bull crap, shame on you. So let's get to the nitty gritty so that y'all understand what's going on. Take now, pause the video, look at the word citizen. Go ahead. I'll give you a couple of seconds. Just go ahead and pause. Okay, those of you who were smart enough to pause the video, you would have seen that a citizen is a subject, uh, someone who owes an allegiance to a nation, a country. That's fine. Ladies and gentlemen, since when did the people of this nation decide that they wanted to be, pay attention because it's very important, subjects? No, 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 I know, I know, I know some of you don't understand what's going on, what's being said. But ladies and gentlemen, it says we, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union. Okay? They wanted to assure some things. They wanted to establish such things as domestic tranquility. They wanted to ordain a constitution directed towards their so-called representatives. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a representative government. You, We have the House of Representatives. We have the President being a representative when he goes overseas. We have the Supreme Court representing the nation's judiciary and that of carrying out the laws of this country. It's a representative government. All of you know that all of the government employees are public servants. So at what point do a servant 
I said do. I didn't say does. At one point, do a servant get to rule over their masters? So where in the world did we get this notion that we are supposed to be citizens? Now go and look up the word civilian. Put the video on pause. I'll give you time. Now that you're back, let's talk about civilian. Ladies and gentlemen, a civilian is one who is neither in the military nor in the police force. Ladies and gentlemen, all of you, from what I gather, fit the definition of a civilian. Now, if you fit the definition of a civilian, I want you to, I want you to stay with me. If you fit the definition of a civilian, why are you calling yourself a citizen? A civilian is not a citizen. A civilian cannot be a citizen. See, a civilian has rights, not civil rights. Civil rights come from Roman law. We don't care about Roman law. We don't want civil rights. We want our unalienable rights. Because the so-called founding fathers understood that all men are created equal. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you heard my take on that, but that was what they were believing and that's what they were establishing. So if you don't believe me, go back and read the Declaration of Independence because none of you have read it. I know some of you have, but none of the people who are sitting up here listening to this video, who are sitting up here talking about, well, it's me. How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? What are they doing this and they doing that? Oh, God, that's going to make things worse. I ain't got enough money to do this. I ain't got enough money to do that. I'm working hard, nine to five, trying so hard to make a living. You know, it's like it's like I'm doing a song with Dolly Parton or something. There ain't no taking and no giving. I'm sorry. It's just that's how I feel. Well, I'm talking to those people. Those are the lazy ones. Go and read the Declaration of Independence and understand that document has never been done away with. Why? Because it's an affidavit. What? It's an affidavit. Wait a minute. How, what, wait, well, hold on. How do you know it's an affidavit? Go and take a look at the signatures attesting to the information in that document. It is witnessed. That is a lawful document. Why do you think they've held on to it, people? Without that document, they don't have any authority to do anything. So go back and read what it says. That lets you know what the intent of the so-called people were. Not the founding fathers, because those were not you all need to understand, they all represented a certain group of people. Okay? Just go do the research. All right, so when it comes to uh, citizens and civilians, you want to be a civilian. Go and correct the record. Tell them, hey, I misspoke. See, I didn't know that y'all done took words and just twisted them around and spun them around and slap it up, flip it, whip it down. On oh, anyway. Y'all did all that stupid stuff, and then you want to try to play me, okay? Make them, make them, make them clap to this. So, ladies and gentlemen, what I want to do for you is I want to get some of you to think. All of you ain't going to think because you're not bright enough to think. No, 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 I'm not putting you down. I am not putting you down. Well, you tell me I'm not bright enough. That means I'm stupid. No. The only reason why it would mean you were stupid is if you felt you were stupid. Can nobody call you stupid and it actually have meaning unless you yourself feel that you're stupid? So if you believe you're stupid, then you're stupid. Because stupid is what stupid does and it is stupid of a person to sit up there and think that they're stupid when they're not. So if you believe you're stupid, then you're stupid. And ain't nothing nobody can do to change that. But if you know that you're not stupid, who in the world can come and tell you that you are? So y'all need to stop letting people get that much control over your lives. Well, he said I was stupid. Well, you are, mama. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh-oh, I got to go out here with the puppies. So y'all got to hold, okay? Okay, so let me make sure of something before I continue. Just had to make sure of something. I have some remodeling I have to go do. And so I'm going to have to dilly-dally. But what I was trying to get across to you guys, if you go back and look at the foundation of how the country started. You see, even though they declared their independence from England, England had no right to the land. England didn't own the land. 
But see, what you all are not paying attention to, when Columbus got here, between the time Columbus was here and the time of 1776, the British had claimed ownership of the land. Well, you guys should understand, they can only claim ownership if they conquered something. So between the so-called 1692 and 1776, there was a conquest. And then what happened is, supposedly, when they declared their independence, there was an overthrow. You have a party and somebody drinking tea, just like the British. And so after you have the, the party of tea, then you have a, the British are coming, and then you have a, I'm a traitor! And, you know, then you have all of that stupid stuff. So with all of that going on, going back to the foundation and seeing how all of this got started, you will see that the people never, ever elected to have someone rule over them. That's what they were getting away from. That's why they were creating a new government. Everybody said it was a democratic form of No, it wasn't. It was a representative form of government, but the representatives needed the will of the people. So it was a mixture of democratic and representative. Now, don't get me wrong, people. I don't vote. I don't have a dog in this race. I'm just telling you what the history says. I'm not telling you what I think. Go back and do the research for yourself. Like I said, logic dictates that there is no way in the world that the public servants could rule. They are public servants. Who are they serving? The public. They could never rule over the public. That means that Congress could never create any laws that rule over the public. But you all don't get that. But you keep coming in as these citizen creatures. You're not a state citizen. You're not a U.S. citizen. Those are creatures of the state. They were created by the state. So, so I ain't a corporation. You put my name in all caps. You are a corporation because you let them call you a citizen. They can do whatever they want to to you when you call yourself a citizen. So stop calling yourself a citizen. You don't have to be sovereign or anything else, but you can be a representative of the sovereign of the country. You can be one of the people. You don't need to be nominated or elected. You can speak on their behalf by holding up the laws that those peoples hold dear. What are they? You guys don't understand what common law is? See, everybody keeps saying common law has been abolished. Common law has not been abolished. The Supreme Court couldn't abolish common law if somebody gave them the authority to do so. Because the people didn't have the authority to abolish common law. Those were the laws upon which this so-called wannabe nation was founded. So if that is the case, common law cannot be overturned. Habeas corpus is a common law right. Look, ladies and gentlemen, there is a writ. And give me a second, I'm going to show it to y'all. The writ of Ardita Coella. Do you know what that means? Well, it says Latin words for a complaint having been heard. This is where you've already been sentenced, convicted, tried, and served, and all of that stuff. And wait a minute, hold on. You want that judgment overturned. See, it's an ancient writ used to attach the, attack the enforcement of a judgment after it was rendered. Many people have never used it. Why? Because they're claiming that it is no longer valid, which is a lie. Matter of fact, this particular writ, ladies and gentlemen, was used as early as 2008, and I think there's a 98 case, 85, okay? This is a, an actual case where they did it in 1985. Ladies and gentlemen, this writ is viable. You just have to go in there and let them know that it is not a statutory writ. And I'm not here trying to get a statutory remedy. I'm trying to get a common law remedy. This is a common law writ. I have the right to access the common law. The common law has not been abolished in the United States. And if it has, you need to show me where it was the will of the people to do so. Y'all need to start thinking for yourselves. Stop arguing with them. Stop going back and forth with them. My name is not this. My, I'm not this. Stop doing all of that. They open their mouths. Well, you can't do that. Then you better show me I can't do it. Just because you open and close your mouth doesn't make it a law. So saying that I can't do something and proving that I can't do something, I need you to provide that proof on the record and I don't need your statutory or court opinion. I need you to show me the law where the people agree to this. And no, the people did not agree that the legislator could make up any laws they want. The legislator could make up a law if they wanted to, but they could not make up any law that infringes upon the right of the people. I have a right to access common law, and you 
don't have any authority to stop me. That's what y'all need to be understanding. Okay? The cases where the individual did this and won this, you need to understand, they said it was a civil case. There is no difference between civil and criminal. It's the court. You see, the judicial power. Oh, sorry, we're going to do one more. I'm going to take about five more minutes if you guys don't mind. I need to explain something else to you guys because some people are getting it and a lot of you are not getting it. So I need you all to just start doing it. I was going to do it first and then show you, but no, y'all need to start doing it. The Constitution says this should, yeah, the judicial power shall be vested in one Supreme Court. Hold on now. I need y'all to pay attention to what they said. Go back and read it for yourself. The judicial power shall be vested in one Supreme Court. Okay, so there's only one Supreme Court. Everybody knows that, right? Now pay attention. And in any other inferior court, as Congress may from time to time ordain or establish. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, wait a minute. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. Hold on. Let me, let me show y'all so y'all can. Y'all need a visual aid. So let's do this, and then we're going to get out of the way. Nobody asked for you. Sitting up here trying to interfere with what I'm trying to do. Okay, judicial power. So we have one Supreme Court. Hold on. Don't want that. Judicial power. One Supreme Court. Hold on now. We, everybody knows there's only one Supreme Court, right? The one for the state and the one for the United States of America. But the one over all the states is this one right here. This one Supreme Court. It's called the Supreme Court of the United States of America. All right. Now, the judicial power. One Supreme Court. I want you to pay attention. All right. We got one more. Y'all need to pay attention to this one. This is important. If you, if you don't get this, then you're you, you on crack and ain't no help for you. Uh oh, got to get my. Oh, get back over here. Sass? Who wants to sass? Go ahead and try to sass me, mother. Oh, anyway, I apologize for that. All right. Come on, give me my space. The the, the boss, this 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 sticking as, as Congress. May. Oh, look at that. It didn't give me my, my space bar. My space bar, because I got to hit the center, and it don't like it when I don't hit the center. So that's my fault, ladies and gentlemen. Get out of here, B. I said center. B is just center stage. All right. As Congress may from time to time ordain. So let me tell you all what we're trying to say here. If there's only one Supreme Court, and the judicial power is vested in that court, pay attention, and in other inferior courts, as Congress made from time to time or day, and this may not be the exact words, but you're going to see it's pretty close. First of all, inferior? Wait a minute. Inferior courts are not equal to the Supreme Court, right? Everybody knows the Supreme Court is over all the other courts, right? Okay, just want to make sure. Okay, hold on now. If they all possess the same judicial power, hold on now, just the powers goes with the judicial branch. If they all possess the same supreme judicial power, then how can this court be superior to the lower inferior courts if they have the same judicial power? That means they all have the same power. That means that the Supreme Court doesn't have the authority over the other courts that tell them anything. So, ladies and gentlemen, the judicial power is vested only in the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is the one who gives it to the other courts. It is my belief, as I proved in New Mexico, that you have to petition the Supreme Court to assign your case to a court under its judicial power so that you can have access to the common law. I did it in New Mexico. I just didn't follow through. But I knew it was a sound theory. And they proved it when they assigned my case to a judge, the Supreme Court of the state, <coughs> assigned my case to a judge, and once they assign my case to that judge, pay attention. 
he was 80 miles away. Ladies and gentlemen, this is FedEx. They're delivering um, an air conditioning unit that they should have delivered some time ago. Should have been delivered yesterday. So let me go ahead and take care of this. I'm going to let you guys go. We'll finish up this conversation about the Supreme Court and all that stuff and judicial power later. Take care, everyone.